Oh, amen. Thank you. And we've got Frank Pulley, who does both our real estate and business coaching and is teaching with me tonight. Yeah, well, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I think we have some really exciting stuff to share with you today. Awesome. And then we've got Troy Peterson. Troy is our newest addition to our Wealth Builders coaching team. And uh, he and his wife, Eileen, are not only good friends, but wow, do they bring really some knowledge and uh, information to the coaching team on the market. So Troy, do you want to say hi? Well, hi, everybody. It's great to be here. Thanks so much, Karen, for the great introduction. I'm excited to hear from you and Frank tonight. Can't wait to see what you've got. Oh, thank you. We're kind of excited too, because you know, everything that we're looking at doing uh, for the kingdom of God, moving you forward in the vision that God's given you really gets us excited. And we are just very much looking forward to uh, spending an hour, the next hour with all of you. I want to give you a little bit of information before we get started. First of all, this is an interactive webinar. What that means is that we've got 45 minutes that we're going to be sharing with you. And we're going to be leaving 15 minutes at the end to answer any questions that you have. But what I would like to hear, and I'm pulling up my chat uh, button here right now, is I want to know where you are joining us from. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Wow, we've got, this is amazing. I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right, but Tear, or I think it's Tear Harry. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that right. Coming in from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome, Mike from Grand Junction, Colorado. Whoa, we've got someone joining us from Georgia, Jacksonville, Florida. We've got Jay from Mesa. Whoa, it's going so fast. We've got, um, oh, I just saw Amy, Sarah from Arkansas, Phil from Menominee Falls, Wisconsin in the Midwest. I'm a Minnesota girl. Tad from Anoka, Minnesota, hello. Totally uh, familiar with Anoka. Jacqueline from Dallas. Oh, this is amazing, you guys. I hope you're seeing this. We've got Marva from St. Louis. Deborah from Orange County. Welcome. We've got someone that just joined us from, I saw it from London. We've got Kim from Texas. Good to see you, Kim. This is amazing. Do you know, looking at all these names, oh, we've got another Georgia, Ohio, Las Vegas. Adrian from Tampa. Wow, you guys, this is really heartwarming. Candace coming in from Georgia. Uh, Kimberly from Colorado Springs. Rachel, hello, welcome. Joy from England. We are so blessed to have you. Do you know, you guys, when you see this and we, I see this, I'm just thinking there is that sound in the spirit that people are saying yes to. And it is so evident and it is from all over the world. We just have Dennis that just posted from Pismo Beach, California, welcome. What a blessing. Uh, so again, um, when you got your questions, go ahead and you can chat with each other. You can send us messages as we go through this, write your questions as we go. We've got this amazing team that is behind the scenes that is catching all of your questions and they're posting it and sending it to us. We'll answer as many as possible. Tonight, we're focused on a business plan, which is really starting with vision and elements that we want to help you to carry out the vision plan. One of the things, oh, we've got Johannesburg. Hello, Gershon. Hello, Gary from Fort Worth, Texas. Mary from Littleton. We're so glad to have you. One of the things in all my years of uh, 25 years of banking and then going into uh, working for Andrew Womack Ministries, wealth builders and consulting with ministries and businesses from all over the world. One thing that I have noticed is that the difference between people actually just having a vision and seeing maybe what God wants them to do or they're excited about where they wanna go and success, meaning actually reaching your destiny and seeing that vision come to pass is implementation. And all of that starts with a business plan. So tonight, what we're going to be sharing with you is how to pull elements together for a business plan that is actually gonna help you 
see that vision become reality. So whether you're an aspiring entrepreneur, meaning someone that you want to start a business, this is going to help you tremendously. Maybe you're already an entrepreneur and you want to get out of that mom and pop shop and start to scale up. Or maybe you've got a good business going, but you know that God's got more. Tonight's teaching is going to help you. And one of the things we'll be sharing with you, and I'll preface it with this, is we do have a business and nonprofit workshop that is coming up August 18th through the 20th. And it is in Denver, Colorado. We have very limited seating for in-person. We've also got the live stream. So you're going to get a little glimpse tonight into what that weekend is all about. And we'll be sharing more about some of the speakers and the topics that we'll be talking about as we go. So, all right, let's get started. Um, Frank, you are doing uh, this particular webinar with me. So if you want to yes. just take a moment while I pull it up and welcome sure. people, that'd be awesome. I want to welcome everybody tonight. I think we have a, a unique view of the business plan. You know, if you've started a business before and you've uh, made a business plan, you know, like everybody does, um, then one of the things that you've got to include, which most people don't, is the Lord. And by the way, I said most people. Do you realize that more people will spend uh, more time planning a two-week vacation than they do doing a business plan that takes them through the rest of their life? So listen up. Wow, Frank, that is amazing. But it's kind of true. I mean, I spent a lot of time where you just kind of show up for work, right? You respond to emails. Um, but as Andrew Womack says, if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. But that is not us. We are the Wealth Builders family and we are about going out and really changing culture, changing the world and learning how to build wealth to create a legacy and um, you know have an impact on the world around us. And I know that all of you have a heart for that. So we've entitled this webinar, Ignite Your Vision. And I'm gonna get started and give you a little information here that everything starts with vision. So um, we'll share some scripture with you too, but really when we look at what the vision is that we have for our business or our organization, or even for a real estate company, when we tap into that, we have everything flow through that and everything is measured against that. Do you know, you and I are called to do different things. Um, I used to look at organizations or leaders or even ministries and think, wow, I just want to be just like that person. But what the Lord really ministered to me and put on my heart is, you know what, I've created you to be you and I have a specific purpose and destiny for you not to just duplicate what other people are doing, but really to tap into that space that God has called you to. And so that is the vision that you have. That's a vision that I have for our lives and for our organizations that we start with. So we're going to be talking about vision. We're going to be talking about setting benchmarks, develop, developing strategies, creating strategic action plans. And while this is not a complete business plan like we do in the business coaching at Wealth Builders, this is going to give you a great start of an area to start to lay out your plans, to start to organize your thoughts into something productive that you will begin to see that vision become reality. So let's start with what is your vision? A vision statement is something that you and I should take time to put together in any business that we create. Even we do that with real estate. Like, why are we here? Why are we called to real estate? Well, why are we called to do the business that we're called to do? So with Wealth Builders, many of you have probably heard this, um, the vision and the, the reason that Wealth Builders exist is to help you with making sense of making money for making a difference. So everything that we do at Wealth Builders, we measure by that, like, is this supporting the vision? And with a vision statement, a vision statement identifies what a company would like to achieve or accomplish. So if you don't have a vision statement, or maybe you do, and you're thinking maybe it needs to be refreshed, 
ask yourself why your company or organization exists. What makes you go to work every day? You know, Frank, one of the coaching clients that we're working with, we had a discussion about this recently yes. where he was just feeling like he was um, showing up for work, but sort of getting lost in the day to day tasks. And one of the questions that we asked is like, you know, why, why do you feel led to do the business that you're doing? And as we heard him answer those questions, we were able to help him identify really the true vision statement for his company. And it was to help bring success to others. Well, maybe you're a marketing agency or maybe you're someone out there that does real estate transactions for someone or does inspections, it's easy to say our vision statement is to be the best, you know, marketing agency out there, or to be the best real estate uh, broker or inspector out there. But when God calls us to something, there's something deeper in that vision with purpose to bring a blessing to others. And so that's why we say, ask yourself, why do you exist and what makes you go to work every day? And so Frank, I would love for you to just give a little insight into vision statements from your perspective. Well, you know, your, your, your vision statement, as you said, should include all those components, but so often we forget the Lord. And I threw a little thing together to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that is entrusted to us to yes. demonstrate the love of Christ Jesus to everyone we encounter. That should be, those words are something similar to a part of your vision statement, along with describing exactly why you exist, who your customer is, and, and uh, you know, what you plan on doing. That is awesome. An example I love to use, it's not their vision statement anymore, but way back when, the vision statement for Disney was to make people happy. And I love that because a vision statement isn't supposed to be long and complicated, but it's supposed to be something that actually helps guide you in your organization and how to, what are you pursuing each and every day? Yeah. So if we think about Disney and let's just use that example of to make people happy, whether it is someone that is high up in the organization and management, or it's someone that maybe what their job is, is to keep things clean. When they know that the vision and really the measure that success comes with is fulfilling the vision of making people happy, it really empowers you to be able to move forward in any position that you're in and make decisions with confidence. So uh, I'm not saying that this existed or anything. I'm just like thinking about someone that's maybe sweeping or trying to clean up at Disney and they know that the vision is to make people happy. Well, if there's a little child over here crying, they know like it's okay for me to walk away from what I'm sweeping up, go over and check on this, per this little person and make sure that they are okay and bring them back to that uh, state of like feeling you know, safe or happy, what can we do to help you? So a vision statement is why you exist. And it not only encourages you as a CEO or upper management to carry it out, but it's something that is going to encourage your team and give them purpose of how they should show up at work and, um, you know, find purpose in, in their destiny in aligning with you and your organization. So let's talk about a mission statement. We've got the vision statement and we've got a mission statement, which both are very key and core to your organization. A mission statement explains how at a high level you plan to achieve your vision. And this is your opportunity to define how you will approach your business or organization that will bring results and fulfill your vision. So the vision is why do I exist? God, why do you call me to this business? Why are we here? And a mission statement is helping you and others in your organization understand how you're going to go about it to achieve that vision. So here's a question that I have for you. What has God called you and your ministry and your or your business to do? This is where it all starts. First of all, I wanna just 
tell you that God has an adventure and an assignment for you that is specific to you and your team. It's not going to be like someone else's. So it's important to allow God to show you what that vision is and run with it. Here's some scriptures to give you a little bit of a foundation of what we're going to talk about. Habakkuk 2.2, 2, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. I love this because going back to the simplicity of a vision statement of why you exist, it should be something that empowers people to read it and they know, all right, this is where I need to focus. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. I love this too, because whether it's a nation, I believe nations are called to a God-given vision. And when they go aside from that, you can see chaos, people are not happy. And I think, you know, we're so grateful for the United States of America, but I really think that bringing that vision back to why we are created is going to be key even for us in the United States to be able to get on track with God's vision, right? That brings happiness. And it actually gives people what I call rails to run on. They know that they're empowered to do what God has called the organization to do. And then Habakkuk 2, 3, this is an encouragement for many of us. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Now, I'm not going to take the time to explain this verse, and I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but this is like my take on it. I know that when God has given me or given you a vision, there is an appointed time. So sometimes when we are going through building a business or starting a business or ministry, we might get discouraged or just like think we want this to happen now. But what this gives you um, the assurance of is when you connect with God and you pursue what God has called you to do, what he is telling us here is that that vision will speak. It will not lie, meaning that when you respond and you steward and you walk with God on the vision he has given you, doesn't mean we're perfect. We can make a lot of mistakes, which I certainly have. We can know that God is invested in seeing that vision come to pass. So Frank, I know that um, you've got some scriptures. I know that you are very like in tune with setting a vision for your company. Do you have anything that you'd like to share? Well, let's just talk about the last one, because people tend to not wait for God. They're not patient. And believe me, I've made this mistake before. They try to do it themselves. And it's just never as successful. You've got to be patient and realize that the Lord will come to you when it's the right time. And you shouldn't be tempted to take things into your own hands and rush things. God's time is different from our time. It is, you know, we cooperate with God when we've got our destiny and we've got those, you know, kind of, it's kind of like getting on a train that's going down the tracks. We do have the ability to cooperate with God and bring things to pass, but there's just some things I know in my career and what you're describing, Frank, too, it's like we don't understand why is this not happening? But yeah. when you are doing everything you know to do, you're being a good steward and responsive, you can just rest assured that we know this is going to come to pass and it could be a timing thing. One thing I had to learn, which I'm sure you have too, Frank, is that there is um, an inner connection with people. And sometimes when we are doing all that we can do and we're not seeing the result that we want to see right now, God works through people. And sometimes it can be a timing thing too, where someone is not responding, maybe in the time frame that we would like, or even that God's called them to. But just know that God is faithful, that your vision, what He has given you, will come to pass. Okay, this is 1 Corinthians 3 6, uh, 9 through 11. And I just want to help all of you out there that are maybe that type a personality i'm not saying i'm type a i might might be <laughs> i might have some tendencies but just what frank was saying like we want it all to come to pass right now that's and right we don't see it right we're That's like right. what's going on 
But what I had to learn to manage stress, which I want to encourage all of you to look, if you're called to do great things, anxiety or stress is going to be something that you, you probably are going to be tempted with. So this is going to give you a lot of peace as we go through this, um, just to know what your job is and what your team's job is. It says this, I planted, Apollos watered, but God all the while was making it grow and he gave the increase. So let me just break this down for you. We plant, we water, okay? So we have a part, meaning that we work, we diligently um, implement plans. We do what our part is, but sometimes what we end up doing is taking the responsibility for the increase. And what God is saying here is reminding us that he is the one that brings the increase. This will help you in multiple ways. One way it's gonna help you if you're not seeing the increase in your business you want to see, but you know you're doing all that you can do, you can let that go and know, God, you're the one that brings the increase. I grew up in a farm community. We went out to, the, we owned a farm, even though my dad was a banker. I walked beans, many of you can relate to that. And I understood that no matter what, my dad still farms today with my brother. You can plant, you can fertilize, you can do everything. But we have not yet figured out how you and I can make that corn grow. And that's what God is saying here. So we take our position to be faithful, to follow through with things, but the growth and the increase sits with God. And that in itself helps you know you're not gonna put pressure on your team to produce growth. You manage them based on the tasks and the things that you have asked them to do, but we turn to God and give him the glory for the increase. And there is a timing in that. Also, I love this as a marketer. This has always been like my favorite verse. It says, we, for we are fellow workmen, joint promoters, labors together with God. Can I tell you that God is interested in your success in business? I used to have a business bucket, a ministry bucket, a family bucket, and I learned that there's no buckets, okay? God wants everything to be blessed, and he is involved in everything in our life. He's a joint promoter with us, and he wants to be a laborer together. You are under God's garden and vineyard, a field under cultivation. Here's something for you and I to remember. We are God's building. If any of you listening are saying, God, why did you call me to business? I want to be in ministry and I want to be out there preaching. Can I tell you that you are in ministry? When you are called to business, God is in you. You are God's building. And when you're in business and in the marketplace, you are taking God out wherever you go and you're bringing Jesus to people. It is a high call. And this is what I believe God is reminding us in this verse. Also, he's telling us that it's according to the grace, the special endowment for my task that God has bestowed on me. So whatever it is that you've been called to do, God is telling you that he's given you a grace. He has given you a special endowment to be able to fulfill what he has called you to do. And he just reminds us that like a skillful architect and master builder, I laid the foundation and now he gives you and I the opportunity to build on that foundation. And he encourages us and reminds us that no other foundation can anyone lay that is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. And that just brings a lot of peace. You know that anything God calls you to do, he's already brought success to you. And this uh, scripture just kind of lays out the amazing call that we have in business. All right, so you might say, Karen and Frank, I don't know what my vision is. And we're gonna give you some ideas here on how to really step into and learn what that vision is. Um, so here's some questions that you wanna answer. What are you passionate about in business or ministry? Uh, despite some of the wrong teaching we've had about how God's going to call you to do something that you hate to do, 
I really believe that God has put a passion in us for what he has called us to do. Here's another question. What do you see on the inside when you ask God to show you your purpose? Write that down. If you already have a vision statement documented, maybe you have a business, are you satisfied with it? Is it still relevant? And if you do not have the vision statement, it is time to create one. So here is just a little recap on your vision statement. And again, like I was mentioning, when you've got a business or a nonprofit, everything that you do in the organization needs to line up with the vision and contribute to it. So you want to connect with God's vision, line up with the passion he has put in you. When you write your vision statement, keep it simple and clear so people can run with it. I encourage you when you have that vision statement, communicate, communicate, communicate. I'm gonna give you a little story about one of the organizations that I worked with when I was in banking. We had um, four mergers and conversions in five years. So it was a group that came out of Georgia and they were purchasing multiple um, banks and ours was happened to be the first bank that, that they acquired. And so when you do that, even if you're coming into an organization or you're developing an organization, Paul Milligan has a saying that always stuck with me and he said, culture trumps vision. So the thing is, is that when we have got a vision statement, if the culture doesn't match with that vision, that is going to trump the vision statement. So we have to be purposeful in communicating the vision internally in particular, certainly there's a place for it externally. But one of the things that this organization did is every communication that went out, every time we met for a quarterly meeting, every meeting that every manager ran in that organization started out with communicating, this is our vision, this is our uh, mission, these are our values, and these are our norms. So keeping it in front of people so that they can tap into that vision and it's going to drive their day to day attitude and activities when we communicate that. And then you have to dig in and you've got to put some action to that vision. All right, so once we talk about a vision statement, the next question is how do I get traction to actually see results? And this is where starting to build that business plan comes in. You've got the vision, you've got the mission, and now let's talk about setting benchmarks. In other words, KPIs, which is key performance indicators. We're going to talk about measuring success. We're going to encourage you to get your net out. And also, when you set those benchmarks, you want to make them realistic, but they should be a stretch. So one of the things that we do when we're working with our business coaching clients is we go through a process, which is many more steps of what I'm showing you, but part of it is measuring success. You know, when you even are working with a client, let's say that you've got people that are hiring you to do a job, do you know it's really important that you define success so that you are on the same page? So Frank, I'd love to have some input from you on the importance of measuring success and maybe even some tips on how you approach it. Well, I think success is different things to different people. And I think as uh, Christians, uh, we may start out, heck, Billy did this. He started out just to be a successful businessman and then realized he was doing it for all the wrong reasons. That, that's what he said, not me. And, and then decided <laughs> that that uh, he needed to go for it and help build the kingdom. I think it's okay to start your business remembering Christ, remembering the, the vision, but you've got to build in somewhere to try and, you know, reach generational wealth. You've got to uh, be able to start at some point in time. When are you going to not do it just for yourselves, but for other people? And how are you going to expand on that? And it shows, you know, God, what is God showing you to go for and achieve? Sometimes, I said this in the last quick start meeting, that uh, sometimes God will whisper in our ears. It's a little whisper. Sometimes he yells at us. And man, we hear that. But I wish he would do more yelling with me. 
but uh, he does whisper. And if you listen, it will become louder and more clear. So I think, uh, you know, that's one of those things where you just have to have, uh, you have to have ears open for the Lord. Absolutely. And um, when you bring those elements in, uh, along with there's practical elements. So any business is, uh, you know, it needs profit and growth, right? Yep. So when we measure success, we definitely have to include profit and growth. And certainly it is absolutely aligned with God's purpose for our lives. But I want to encourage you, uh, just like Frank was saying, is to dream as well. What is God showing you yes. to go for and achieve? You know, your vision is going to point to something that is going to definitely help and contribute to what God's called you to do and help other people to be a blessing. But in that part of building your business plan is finding those measurable, what we call leading and lagging indicators that you can step out. Hey, this is where we want to go. I want to have this impact and to do that, I need to reach, for example, this amount in general revenue. I need to reach this amount, maybe uh, in my email list to have the impact that I want to have. There is very practical things that we want to put into our KPIs in addition to impact so that we've got the ability to measure success, not only for ourselves as leaders of an organization, but the people that work with us, maybe they work for us and they have a certain area that they're focused on. They want to know what does success look like for me and how does that contribute to the overall success of the organization? If some of you that are watching and listening are saying, gosh, I just don't know what this should look at, like, I don't know how to measure success. One of the questions I'd like to have you answer is what are problems that you want to solve? There's things that you and I are passionate about that maybe is unique to us. One of the things that I learned is that I love to bring vision to reality. So a problem that I love to help people solve is to take what God's put on your heart and actually be able to put steps to it so that you're solving the problems and you're seeing an impact according to the vision God's given you. Um, this also can give you a really good clue into like, hey, how do we how do we come into a market? How do we find the gap in the market? Well, what are problems that are out there that you can solve? It helps you with your marketing plan. It helps you with your business plan. And definitely it helps you to measure success. And then what do you want to achieve in your ministry or business? And what would it take to make it happen? Uh, I love when people come in. I, I had this amazing team at one of the organizations that I worked with. And one guy in particular was like that idea guy, right? So one of the things we'll be sharing at the business conference is you, you want to have different people in different positions around the table. And sometimes that might be just family members. Um, it might be even some volunteers uh, or it might be employees. But one of the things that I really loved about this guy, he would come into a meeting and he would list off 10 ideas like in no time. And it was awesome because it kind of helped us like, wow, we need to think big and be creative. But what I realized is that if that person was not part of a team that could actually implement all those amazing ideas, he was very satisfied. Just let me unload the ideas and walk out of the meeting and he felt great. But let me ask you a question. If you come to a meeting or someone comes in your meeting and they just unload a bunch of creative ideas and they leave, are you actually going to be able to achieve your vision or have a successful business just leaving those ideas on the table? And the answer, of course, is no. And that's why this step in your business plan of defining success and setting up KPIs that you can measure in a dashboard is what's actually going to help you to see this vision move into reality. All right, so another thing is get your net out. I really wanna encourage you just like when um, the disciples God had put on their heart like, hey, you know, get your net out because you're going to have a big haul here. And they're like, ah, I don't I don't think so. Like maybe we've been fishing all night. 
and they didn't really put the net out that God was intending and it broke the net, right? Well, if you want growth, this is a question you need to have answered. Do you have the systems and infrastructure to support it ongoing? And that's kind of going into some of the timing thing that, that Frank talked about. You know, when we have a big vision, we want to see results now. We oftentimes forget to ask the question, if I actually saw that prayer come to pass, if God answered that prayer and all this business showed up today, what would happen? And sometimes the answer is like, we would implode, right? And that's where I'm just kind of encouraging you here to dream big, but I want you to think about what needs to be in place that if God answered your prayer for growth today, that you would be prepared for it. So in your KPIs, in your benchmarks, in your planning, think about infrastructure. Also, if you do not have the ability to hire more help, ask yourself what will help you be more efficient or other ways to take on more to reach people um, and prepare your team to take on more. When I was at, uh, the, at Andrew Womack Ministries and helping to position different areas for growth, one of the things that we had to talk about is how with that growth that people are going to be expected to go beyond maybe what they are normally doing or what they are used to be used to be doing or used to doing we'll say it that way so in that it's sort of preparing you and your team to take on more so that in that growth they can see themselves functioning in the area that's going to be necessary for you to actually see the growth that God has given you. And when you set those benchmarks, you want to make them realistic, but a stretch. And I love to say, invite God into it. Are you committed to reaching the benchmarks? If you've decided that you want your company to reach 10, a $10 million gross revenue, are you committed to doing what is necessary to reach those benchmarks? Do the benchmarks or the KPI support the vision God's given you? And will they cause you to have to stretch and rely on God? Um, and so Frank, when we work with uh, some business coaching clients, this is something that we spend a lot of time on is helping them to define what their core organization actually needs and those benchmarks. Can you give a, a couple tips on how people can come up with effective benchmarks? Well, I think uh, a lot of the businesses that we worked with have been very successful businesses, but a couple of things they don't realize, they try to be um, a company that everybody is their customer. And, and if you had all the business in the world, all of a sudden you would fail and you're not gonna satisfy everybody. So you have to really, dig in and i'm telling you it is quite a rel revelation for most of the people we work with dig in and who is your customer who is not your customer it doesn't mean they're bad people it's just that those are the people that you don't go after or maybe refer them uh, to somebody else the other thing too is as far as this, uh, training programs and things like that again some of the businesses several that we have uh, started coaching successful businesses really didn't have anything as far as a training manual, an operations manual, job descriptions, and those sort of things. It was a surprise. And once they got that stuff in order, it was amazing how much better their businesses ran. People want to be involved in your business. They want to be successful. And uh, you just got to realize that. That's awesome, Frank. Thank you. The next step that we're going to talk about in your business plan is establishing strategies. So you've got your vision, you've got your mission, you're setting your KPIs. The next thing you want to tackle is how are we going to accomplish the KPIs, the benchmarks? So strategies are what strategies will you use to achieve the benchmarks? You want to look for opportunities in what you already have available, what's in your hand, and do the strategies bless people in further business or the ministry? So this is sort of the how-to. Uh, let me give you a, an example. Um, with what we're called to do in Wealth Builders, we know that there is global impact. 
And we know that we need to reach more people that don't even know that we exist today. So we're not trying to go after, like Frank said, we're not trying to reach everybody in the world, but we're really trying to connect with people that are hearing that sound in the spirit that God has called them to build wealth, not just for their family, but for generations, build a legacy and have an impact on culture. So in that, one of the um, KPIs that we have is we want to build our email list because we know that if we have a larger email list that we're actually able to communicate and get the content and education to a larger group of people. But when you look at a strategy, you are saying, okay, this is good. We want to reach this number, but what strategy do we want to use to achieve it that lines up with our vision? So uh, here's an example, and then I'll go through and just give you the information. So our team, we literally have these discussions and we're like, okay, we wanna reach more people. And our heart is to help people get the information they need so they can begin to have an understanding that God wants more from them and they wanna build wealth. So we have to come up with practical strategies on how to get the information out there. So just to give you a little insight into one of the strategies we're working on currently, is Billy has a money mastery product, which many of you know about. He uh, videoed some programs and we want to get that out to more people, but also bring them into the Wealth Builders family so that we can help to disciple, educate and help them along their journey. So we had to come up with a way that we could get this information, this content of money mastery out to more people. And in that, the strategy was we're going to um, get a like a series of four teachings out free of charge. People get a free download. So they're gonna be blessed by it, that they're gonna get information. And in that, they are going to uh, give us their email address, right? So that we can not only provide this content for them, but that we can communicate and let them know what else is available so that they have someone to help them along this journey. And another strategy that we use is how do you get that information out to people? Well, certainly social media ads, but there's something called Google grants for nonprofits. And we just got off a phone call before this call with a guy that helps us with that. We've got the ad running. People are seeing it all over the world. They are clicking on it and getting the opportunity to view Billy's Money Mastery four sessions completely free of charge with a download that's going to help them walk through it. Well, the KPI started with, okay, we want to reach this number of people and build our email list to here the strategy that supports the vision, right? Not to give email, right? But supports the vision of helping people to make sense of making money for making a difference. Well, we had to put a practical strategy plan to it to actually go out and achieve what we knew God put in our heart to do. So do you see how that works? So the strategy is a free download, free content, but using Google grants to be able to reach people that would not otherwise see Billy and Wealth Builders. Yeah. And by the way, if you're a nonprofit, what Google provides for you is $10,000 of fee, uh, free Google ads a month. Now there's a lot to that. We'll be talking a little bit about that this weekend with marketing, but it enables you to be able to reach people for your ministry or nonprofit. So these strategies will drive your marketing action plans and project teams, and it's a critical step to implementing change. Here's a question, what do you have available? What are you doing today that you can maximize or add a strategy to? That's something too, what's in your hand? What are we doing today that we can leverage and do more with? Quick example too, and I know we're short on time here, so I wanna get through this quickly so we can answer questions, but we had all this amazing content from Billy, all these videos, uh, all this teaching that has been on his heart to do. And we're like, how can we get this out to more people? Well, out of that, we created Wealth Builders University. It's a very low cost. It's a way to leverage what was already in our hand. We already had the videos and we put it out in a new channel or a platform, which we go over when we talk about the BMGC. All right, so here's questions. Do they bless people and further the ministry or business? It is about being a blessing. 
It's about finding out what the top needs of the people that are affected by a strategy and it makes it easy to hear direction when our focus stays on him. Do you see how that sort of just clears out all this other stuff? God, what have you called me to do? Help me dream with you. And now these are the practical steps to make sure that we see it come to reality. The next step is you create strategic action plans. So this is breaking down the strategy and actually assigning the steps that are needed to be able to follow through and achieve the vision. So you want to have project teams that help you achieve it. I encourage you, if you're part of a larger organization, create cross department teams when possible. Why is that necessary? Well, one of the funny stories that I have again from the ministry is that, you know, we're over here in this world and the marketing team is getting information out. They plan to grow uh, and, and maybe have a call to action where people call into the phone center. And I worked at the phone center. The problem is, is if the phone center isn't aware that the marketing team is out there and they're driving a bunch of people there, it's a negative experience. And there's things that we may not realize we need to be thinking about when we actually start to put some of those amazing marketing ideas in place. So you get the buy-in, you get a strong foundation of things you need to consider before you start moving forward. And really, if you've worked on a team, which I know many of you have, isn't it nice when someone actually asks your opinion and they value the gift that God's put in you and bring it to the table? Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna pause, I'll look at questions. Um, but I would just love to hear from our other coaches on this. We've got such successful people connected with Wealth Builders. So Mike Davis, I would love to have some input from you on this topic. Well, this is so good. And I think it just gives people, you know, that are just, there's so many options. It's kind of like going to Starbucks. Okay. Somebody, <laughs> for the first time you go, okay, what do you want to drink? And you go, oh my gosh. I mean, so many, so there's just too much. And that's basically with life. And so you have to pinpoint and it does take God. There is some practicality, but uh, I just want to make two things that I think it, it's helped me. And that is there's a prayer in Ephesians 1 15, that prayer, uh, Paul says that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened that you may know. God wants us to know he is the most awesome father. He's not out there saying, hey, here's life. Do it the best you can. He wants us to know he's put gifts and talents within each and every one of us. And I'll say this, uh, Karen, in Isaiah 43, 4, it says that God will bring you people for your life. And anything that is uh, God wants us to do, it's going to be bigger than us. And it's just going to be uh, people that you're going to need. And we don't know those people. And thank God he can cause them to be brought across your path. So Isaiah 43, four has just been such a blessing to my life. That's awesome. Mike, thank you so much, Troy. Well, Karen, you and Frank did such a good job putting this out. I was taking notes uh, and, and just kind of hitting some points. I'm like, wow, you've, you've helped me do that in my business. You've helped me do this in my business. And I've watched things just completely morph and change with some of these principles that you shared. These are really solid principles that help you to grow. One thing I did hear you talk about was passion and vision really being the core of everything. And it really is so important to be building a vision around your, your passion. And uh, one question that I often hear asked is, what is the thing that you would do for free? Because that's what you're most passionate about. And I, I kind of do that in my business every day and people pay me to do it. And sometimes it's absolutely amazing. So absolutely wonderful things that you shared. I've been watching the questions come through too. Phenomenal questions that I know we probably don't have time to get to today. <laughs> well, we'll get to as many as possible. And Troy, thank you so much. So I'm going to ask the question and then I'm going to pitch it to one of you guys okay. to start us off. And, and definitely I want all of you to contribute. So this is a great question from Gershon. Gershon says, when do I leave my full time job as a banker to go into ministry and start my own business? And so, Troy, I'm actually going to come right back at you to give us the a first thought on that answer. 
Okay, my first thought, and I did read that question when it came up, Gershon, great question. It really shows your heart in there to go out and serve the Lord. I serve the Lord very much in my business. I call myself a minister. That's a minister with a B because my business <laughs> is a ministry. My employees are my parishioners. I minister to them and help provide their needs. Like it says in Romans 15, if you're going to minister to their spiritual needs, you also minister to their material needs. And I do that with my employees and my staff by empowering them to be better than, to be the best that they can be. And then together we're able to serve our community. So how do you know the exact time? When you are partnering with God, he's going to lead you into opportunity and you're going to wake up one day and go, wow, how did I get here? And you're going to be flowing with such peace and such prosperity, but you're going to have to walk it out. Don't stress over what time. Join with God, partner with him and start walking and he will unfold everything for you. Awesome. Anybody want to add anything to that? Yeah. Wow, Troy. <laughs> that was a great answer. <laughs> that wow. was a great answer. It was. Okay, this is from Sandra. She says, I'm an instructional designer seeking to provide consulting services. I developed and launched a website offering services, but I'm struggling determining how to set myself apart from other instructional designers. Any suggestions? Oh my gosh, Sandra, it's almost like a setup with this question yeah yes there is something that we cover in the business model canvas that we'll be going over at great length in the um in the workshop that is called a value proposition and it is so important you've got your vision you've got your mission but really it is i call it like this i like to find the gap in the market and the opportunity to set yourself apart can be even in in your pri like pricing model. I'm not saying a low price. I'm saying how you package things, uh, or your distribution. Really finding how you can come into a market and provide a niche or a value that others don't, and in that is your differentiation. So it is called a value proposition. We are going to be covering it at length at the workshop. Um, and by the way, you guys, we still have a, uh, if you, if um, our team could post, there's a code out there that you can get a nice discount on, on the um, event. Um, one of them is WB200. You can actually register for the live stream for just $97 with that. But if the team could post that, let them know the code and how they can register at the best price, we will cover that in uh, great detail. I've got some great stories with my um, home staging, how I went into that and I did not stand out in my field by any means. As a matter of fact, I had no like experience at all, but through this process, I actually found a niche that kind of set the competition apart. Like I didn't have competition. And also you can listen to the podcast. I just uh, did a, a few months ago on the blue ocean strategy, but but we will definitely cover this at the event. This is your value proposition. All right, here we go. This is from Jean. And Jean says, I'm seeking godly counsel on how to go about my father's business. I'm in real estate and I want to build community for God's kingdom. I want to leave a legacy for the next generation, but I have no confidence to do it on my own. I need divine connections. How do I get partners? Mike Davis, I'm going to yeah, pass that one to you. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> like that, scri that, that scripture of Isaiah 43, 4, I, I would really stand on that, that God will bring you uh, the people that you need to do the business, you know? And the great thing is, Karen, is that when God puts a desire in your heart, it, he can help you. It's not, we get so, uh, you guys even talked about it, you know, about I have to make this happen. And uh, if this is a desire in your heart, you can rest assured that God wants your desires fulfilled. He does. And so I believe if you just stand in faith, believe, speak these scriptures out that God's bringing me across people's uh, path. I have the divine favor of God. And, uh, you know, just like Billy talks about money, money's uh, not pursued, it's attracted. Once you get this desire bubbling inside of you, people and ideas will start coming to you. You will start attracting them. That's so good. Anybody want to add to that? Oh, that was a great answer, Mike. 
<laughs> wow. That's awesome. That was great. All right. This is from Rachel. Does Wealth Builders coach individual real estate agents? I find myself spending more time and money marketing and not thus far seeing more results. Um, Rachel, we do. We actually have two areas of coaching. We do real estate coaching, which is really more focused on building your real estate portfolio. But we've got business coaching, which really helps you to build that business plan to see results. So I think what you're looking for, Frank, would you agree would would be the business coaching? Uh, yeah, because, uh, you know, a lot of realtors, they don't run their businesses like businesses. And I believe we can re really help them in that regard. Absolutely. And I was, you know, I was a real estate agent, single mom, all that stuff. My son's actually a real estate agent down working for Troy down in Cocoa Beach. And there, there are a ton of real estate agents, but it's just about finding that niche, that gap in the market and, and um, just even some unique ways to reach people. That's what we talk yeah. about a lot is, you know, identifying, we call it your moves, your customer segment. Now, how do I reach that person? You don't want to be a real estate agent to everyone. There is a customer segment that you are the, you know, you've got unique capabilities to be able to reach. And we help you hone in on that to know who it is that you're trying to reach and help you meet the right target. All right, Paula, this is great. She says, isn't Google on the pro values boycott list? <laughs> it is, but we're not asking you to invest in Google. Um, it's kind of like what Chad says is like, uh, it's like he was had this discussion with his wife. He shares this story and she's like, so are you saying I can't shop at Target? And uh, this was before all this recent stuff. He's like, no, I, I'm there's a difference between investing in Target and shopping at Target. But the beautiful thing about this is it something that Google actually gives to you? And so again, we're not asking you to invest in it, but it is something out there where people are, they're on Google. And this is a way for you to bring a little light into what is potentially a pretty dark world with the information that you have in your nonprofit. All right, Andrea says, this is a comment. This is so great. This is a, like, they're, I love that you're all kind of ministering and encouraging each other. She says, stepping out of the boat takes faith. Sometimes all the financial ducks are not in a row when you step out into what God is calling you to do. Just kind of an encouragement that it doesn't always make sense. One of the things that we'll be sharing at the business workshop is this thing called Dream to Destiny. And it's really important to understand the process. God, you know, in relationship, he gives you the idea. He, he, um, asks us, invites us to step out in faith, and then the capabilities and the resources show up. And so we really take you through that to understand that process. And then Sandra is wondering, what is the scripture again in Isaiah 44? Was that you, Mike? Yes, it's Isaiah 43, 4. Okay, got it. All right, great. All right, and then um, the code, Stuart, asking about the code, you can do, you can save $350, I just see it posted, by using the code FREEDOM. So go to wealthbuilders.org forward slash events, click on the business workshop, use the code FREEDOM, F-R-E-E-D-O-M. It's only available, I think either expires tonight at midnight or tomorrow and you get $350 off the in-person. That's a pretty good deal. You can also use WB200 to get the live stream for $97. Um, okay, and we've got time for one more question here. This is from Dennis and he says, I'm a real estate agent. He's been at it for almost 30 years, but now he just sees things shifting to ministry. His heart's desire now is to make money uh, to make a difference for the kingdom, to coach and serve his clients. And so Frank and Troy, I just, you're both, uh, Troy's an active real estate agent. Frank's beautiful wife, Becky, has been a real estate agent. Maybe I'll start with you, Troy. Like what advice would you give as a real estate agent, how to make a difference in the kingdom? Dennis, that's a great question. And I know you're hard. I remember meeting you at Dream Trip last week. So I know you're on the right path and very excited for you. Uh, it really is about serving, but it's about serving your customer niche. 
And where do you want to be with your customer? If you can find the right client that you sit in with, you will find that you not only prosper, but you end up with a growing following. Uh, we did this in our business this last year, Dennis, and my staff is happier. Everybody in the office is happier. And there's so much more fruit coming out. So it comes back to your value proposition. What do you really value? What can you focus on? And then you narrow in on that customer. And that's really going to help you to find the delight in the service that you're looking for as you do your day-to-day -day business. Great question, Dennis. Awesome. Frank, Mike, anything to add to that? Well, just real quickly, I mean, I, I, I think what Troy says, you got to find the delight in your business. You know, if you're burned out, maybe you can go ahead and kind of reignite that light and, and take a different direction. Look, your, your customers, you're actually, maybe not all of them are believers, but sometimes by your actions and your words, sometimes they will follow along. And I think that's, that, if that's not doing God's work, then I don't know what is. Awesome. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for being a part of this webinar. And I want to thank all of you for attending this. I want to encourage you to, if you want to go in deeper, go to wealthbuilders.org forward slash events, use the code WB200 or freedom and get a discount. We have very limited seating in person. We would love to have you there. Uh, by the way, we've got the Lap Brothers coming. Annabelle Walnow is going to be doing a 30-minute uh, video session for us on the nonprofit. We've got Colin Carr. All these guys are going to be there. It's going to be an amazing event. And, of course, Billy and Becky will be hosting this event, and we'll be hearing uh, some fresh content from Billy. And if I can just say... I don't know where it's coming from, but Billy is getting more and more revelation and insight every time we see yeah. him. We would love to see you there. So thank you so much for joining us. God bless you and have an amazing rest of the night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.